Good to remember that. Good to remember that. So, uh, several years ago, this picture of, of uh, Bill Gates started to circulate around the internet. I don't know if you've ever seen this picture before. He's holding a sign uh, that says, Hey, Facebook. As some of you know, may know, I'm Bill Gates. If you click the share link, I will give you $5,000. It's about time I give back to the people. You ever see that before? You ever get one of those? When that, when that thing first started circulating around, I got, I got about 17 million of those pictures shared to my Facebook wall, which resulted in about 17 million disappointed people when they shockingly did not get their $5,000. Can you believe that? All those people deceived by Bill Gates. Can you believe that? Or deceived by someone who knows how to use Photoshop and knows how to push people's buttons. It's, it's really tempting, though, for us to want free stuff like that, isn't it? Isn't it? When we're drawn to that kind of stuff. Of course, if it had worked, man, I mean, everybody would have been in on that. Can you imagine the first time one person actually got $5,000 from Bill Gates? Everyone and their brother would be standing in line, right? Wouldn't they? I mean, I know, I know that we're not, we're not greedy people, but if we heard that somebody was out in the parking lot after church today just handing out $100 bills to anybody who wanted one, we'd be pretty silly not to go get a $100 bill, Right? Wouldn't we? I mean, we, we, I know, we know that life sometimes is hard. We all need a little help sometimes. So if somebody wants to bless us for free, it just makes sense to be blessed. True? So if you see someone in the parking lot, someone let me know. I will get in line. I will. You know, we, today we are, we are finishing up a series on, that we've been doing on healing. And we've been talking about a God who wants to bless us for free. People sometimes, you probably have noticed this, have differing ideas on, on, on who God is and how God relates to his people, right? And those ideas range from a, a God who is like a slot machine or a genie who grants wishes to a, a God who is an observer who just kind of watches what's going on but doesn't get involved to a God who is, who is like a judge who's just watching and waiting for us to screw up so that he can sentence us to hell. And, and none of those pictures are accurate. And none of those pictures really come close to the idea of God as, as creator parent who has this deep adoration for his creation that has gone astray. And if you, look in, if you look in Scripture, what you'll see, I mean, beginning to end, you will see that God's desire is to fix, to restore, to renew, to rebuild, to heal His creation, including us, including us. And so when Jesus came to earth 2,000 years ago as the embodiment of God, God in a body, with all of God's power and all of God's authority, and all of God's compassion and all of God's understanding. When he came, the people were drawn to him like a magnet, you know, like a, like a guy handing out $100 bills in the parking lot. The crowds just swarmed to Jesus when he appeared. And I, I want to show you, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Um, if you would take a look in, in your Bibles, I want you to open up with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15. Matthew. If you don't have a Bible, we have them in front of you. Uh, feel free to grab one. If you've got one of these uh, blue Bibles in front of you like this, it's on page 813. 813. It's on 1505 in the maroon large print. This is a really short little section that I want you to look at today, though. Um, like I said, 813 or, uh, or 1505. You can use your tablet or your phone or something like that, too, if you want to. Um, but th again, it's about... it's near the end because it's in the New Testament. The Gospels, we've mentioned before, we've looked at the Gospels a lot because the Gospels contain the story of Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection for us. It is the good news of Jesus for us. So if you haven't read a lot of the Bible, if you haven't really been into that, um, this is a good place to start. The New Testament, right in the Gospels, right here is a good place to start. But this section that we're going to look at in chapter 15, this happens right after Jesus has been teaching the crowds and right after he heals a, a woman's daughter. 
And this is what we're going to go down to verse 29. 29 is a real short little section. But this is going to show you what I'm talking about. This is what it says. Jesus returned to the Sea of Galilee and climbed a hill and sat down. And a vast crowd brought to him people who were lame, and blind, crippled, those who couldn't speak, and many others. And they laid them before Jesus and he healed them all. The crowd was amazed. Those who hadn't been able to speak were talking. The crippled were made well. The lame were walking. The blind could see again. And they praised the God of Israel. So when, when Jesus was, was walking the earth 2,000 years ago, what was it that got these massive crowds to follow him around? I mean, why were these huge crowds following him? It wasn't because he was a nice guy. It wasn't, it wasn't because he was a charismatic teacher. There were a lot of them. It wasn't because he gave good hugs. It was because he could do amazing things, wasn't it? It was because he could do things like, like multiply bread and fish, and he could turn water into wine, and he could heal people. This is why the crowds were following him around, because he could do these incredible things. You know, if you, if you turn over to, to, to Luke's gospel, it says this. It says, he went down with them, and he stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him, because power was coming from him and healing them all. And this happened to Jesus all the time. This happened on a regular basis for a reason. Listen, nobody in the history of the world had the power of God evidenced in their life the way that Jesus did. He could do these things that nobody else had ever done. And the people were drawn to that. They were drawn to him. Because he could do these incredible things. And once they arrived, once they were at Jesus' feet, what he did is he tried to connect them to the source of that power. He tried to point people to the love of God as the source of that power. But if you look in Scripture, if you look carefully, you'll see that Jesus never used um, people's faith as a bargaining chip for healing. He never demands that somebody declare allegiance to God before he heals them. He doesn't do that. He uses healing and miracles and these signs. He uses those as a way to point people to God's power, as a way to, to point them to God's love. That's his ultimate goal is to point them there. But Jesus doesn't just selectively heal people based on how much faith they have. He doesn't just heal you because you have faith, just heal you. He heals whoever needs healing. He helps people who need to be helped. But, but, and this is important to remember this, this is also why we sometimes get an answer that is different from we want, what, what we want when we pray for healing today. You know, when, when Jesus increased the bread and the fish and healed these five, or, or, or fed these 5,000 people, they were intrigued by that, right? A little bit of bread, a little fish, and he feeds 5,000 people. They were intrigued. And you know what they wanted? They wanted him to become their king. And he said, no. He said, no, I won't become your king. He said, but I am the bread of life. They wanted bread, but he said, I'm the bread of life. He wanted to meet their physical needs, but he didn't just want to meet their physical needs. Do you know what I mean? Jesus wants to heal our bodies, but he doesn't just want to heal our bodies. And so if somebody comes to Jesus and, and they pray for healing and there's brokenness, listen, if there's brokenness in their eternal soul, their soul that lasts forever and ever, and there's brokenness in their physical body, which is temporary and mortal, there's brokenness in both, guess which one he wants to heal more? The spirit, right? This isn't to say that Jesus doesn't care about, about our bodies, but God has an agenda here, doesn't he? Doesn't God have an agenda in this world? You know what the agenda is? To restore his creation. To heal our spirits. God's ultimate goal is for us to be united with all of his children. To be united with him in his arms forever. That's his ultimate goal. So this life, we know this life is rough sometimes. We know that. God's ultimate goal is not to make this life smooth and cushy. 
God's ultimate goal is for us to be united with him forever and ever. That's his ultimate goal. And so when we do receive a healing today, when you and I do receive a healing today, listen, there's a purpose for that. There's a reason for it. And that reason is to reflect praise and glory to God and to draw people to him the way that Jesus did. Jesus used those healings as a way to draw people to God. So when you and I receive a healing today, there's a reason behind it. We are to make disciples by directing people to God as well. So if somebody in here or anywhere just says, God, I want, I want healing, I need healing, just to make life cushy again, it is entirely possible that God is going to take that prayer request and put it on the back burner while he spends more time working on our spirits. Does that make sense? Does that, does that make sense? Does that resonate? The healing comes for a reason, and that is to reflect God's glory. So if we only want healing to make life, make life cushy, God's probably working on our spirit at that moment instead. Now, having said that, listen, having said that, it's important to remember that God is immensely concerned about your body. Paul, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul asks us this. He says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You are not your own. The Holy Spirit lives in you. So when our bodies break down and when our bodies keep us from fulfilling the mission that our Lord has given to us, Jesus absolutely desires to heal us from that. The head scratcher, what, what, what really boggles my mind, is that more people don't come to him to receive that, that kind of healing. This, this is amazing to me. It's a head scratcher to me. Because if you look in the New Testament, these crowds flocked around Jesus, right? They swarmed him. Because they wanted to be near him. They wanted to touch him. Power is coming out from him and healing people. And they wanted to be a part of that. And we know that the same Jesus is alive today. So why don't people line up for that healing today? Do they not think that the healing still happens? The same Jesus who healed then is alive today. Do people think that he suddenly stopped wanting to heal or stopped having the power to? Maybe people don't know how to tap into it. I wonder if that's it. I wonder if the reason that so many of us put up with our diseases and our sicknesses and our pain, I wonder if the reason is that we don't know how to access the healing power of God. You know what's amazing though? You want to hear something incredible? That power is available to us right here and right now. Right here, right now. Jesus talks about this very thing in, in John chapter 14. He says this, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That's the purpose, to glorify God. So you may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So, so let me ask you a recap. What can Jesus' followers do? Not a rhetorical question. What can they do? Not just pray. We can pray. Anything that Jesus did, right? That's what he says. Those who believe in me will do the things that I've done. Listen, do we, do we think he was kidding? Was he yanking our chain? Was he pulling our legs? Those who believe in me will do the things that I've done. What did he do? Healed people. Blessed people. Restored people. But boy, you guys, you and I, we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. We have the ultimate power in the entire universe in us. And that power heals our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our emotions, and escapes to heal others as well. It emanates from us to heal others as well. So here's the question, right? Are there instructions on how this works? How does that power get from Mitch into other people? How does that power come through me, through you, into one another? Is there instructions for it? There are instructions. The Bible gives us instructions on how to do this. This is crazy. Jesus' own brother James says this. This is so cool. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. 
That's what Jana said. Good call. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? This sounds promising, right? Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. So when we need prayer for healing, it says, what you do is you call for the elders of the church, those who are mature in their faith, those who walk with the Lord, those who know the Lord. You call for the elders of the church to gather around the sick person, to anoint them with oil, and to pray over them. Now oil, some people wonder about that oil. This is, this is oil right here. Oil is, is, a, is an ancient symbol of healing and of soothing and anointing to God. So if you look in the, in the Old Testament, like when a king or a priest was dedicated to God, they would use oil like this and they would anoint them to God. And so when we anoint people with oil, it's symbolic of us dedicating this person to the Lord's care and the Lord's service. So that's why we, when we anoint with oil, we're doing that in obedience to God's command. But this is also a symbol of God's anointing, God's presence with that person. So this is, this is symbolic. The laying on of hands is symbolic, but it seems the key thing in this, in this section is the faith, right? The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The oil symbolic, laying on of hands is symbolic. The, the prayer, the faith that God can make a sick person well, that God can heal, that's the essential part. And if you look in the Bible, you'll see sometimes that it's the faith of the person who's coming forward. But sometimes it's the faith of the person who's praying. But faith is essential in order to release that. So in order for us to receive God's healing today, the instructions are pretty simple. You need, to, you need to want that healing to happen. You need to believe that God can do it and you need to ask for it. And we've mentioned that before, it's so simple. But if you look at those crowds that swarmed around Jesus, they wanted healing, they believed he could do it and they came to ask him for it. And what happened to the crowds? They were healed, all of them were healed and the same thing happens to us today when we want it when we believe it and when we ask for it over the last uh, few weeks we've had we've had people up here praying you know people praying for healing for anybody who wanted to come up and i i i, I gotta tell you guys I've, I've been a little i've been a little surprised um that as we've had i've had these faithful people up here the elders of the church here and in the chapel ready willing and able to pray over anyone i've been surprised at how few people come forward for that you know i i don't know if it's fear or if it's embarrassment, or if it's doubt or disbelief, I'm not sure, I don't know what it is. But it seems that for some reason, I, I don't know why, for some reason people are unwilling to take that step in faith to come forward and receive God's blessings. And I don't get that. So we're gonna offer it again today. We're gonna offer it again today. People up here in the front, people in chapel praying for healing. But here's what I wanna do before that, okay? I want you to take your hand. Do you have a hand, everyone? Hi. You have a hand. I want you to put your hand on somebody else's shoulder, on their arm, on their, on their head, on their elbow. Do it in a gentle way. I can see you students, yeah. Put your hand on someone near you. We're all doing it so it doesn't seem weird. Everyone just do it. Everyone do, we should be creating this big giant chain in here. Now listen, you and I, you and I have issues. Every one of us. Physical, emotional, mental, spiritual brokenness. I am broken and you are too. Every one of us. There's not a single person in here that is perfectly whole. We all need prayer. And so I'm hoping you guys, I'm hoping that some of you, I'm hoping that most of you, I'm hoping that all of you will come up to receive healing prayer today. But in case you don't, I want to make sure you get prayed over. So put a hand on someone and we're going to pray because someone is getting healed today. Let's pray. Father, release the power of your Holy Spirit into this place today. God, as you have been healing people for the last 2,000 years through the love of Christ, heal people today. Mend our brokenness. Heal our wounds. Soothe our pain. Father, if we know of people who are far away in need of healing, let our prayer reach them as well and bless them by your Holy Spirit right now. God, we trust in your goodness, in your love, in your power, 
and your desire to heal and restore us to bring glory to your name. And so we ask for healing right now for those that we are touching, for those that we are praying for. We pray against brokenness. We pray against addiction. We pray against pain, against doubt, against despair. And we commit to praising you and giving you credit for the good results that will come. In Christ's name, amen. This is, I, I really, really, really hope, guys, that you guys will come forward for healing also. We, we got our Thanksgiving dinner. The line is gonna be long. Come up for healing while we're waiting for the line, okay? There still will be food. I promise there will be food. But there will be people up in the front here praying. Uh, Dick and Joyce Meredith are gonna be up here praying. They've prayed for healing for many people before. I'll be up praying. Cindy, I think, is gonna be in the chapel praying. But I hope you guys will come for prayer. We, this is the last Sunday we're doing this. It's the last Sunday. Having said that, please know that if you need healing prayer after today, we always have people that are willing to do that. You know, if, 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 if you don't get a chance to come up today or if, if you're not here but you're watching this on the video or, or if, if something comes up after today and you need prayer, don't hesitate to ask, all right? Don't hesitate to ask. God wants to heal us. We just need to ask for it. We need to believe that he's going to do it and come and, 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 and prepare ourselves for that. So I'm going to ask our, our ushers to come forward and um, ask you to join me in prayer. Father, place your hands on, on our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our spirits, Lord, and, and restore us. God, please overcome our pride, our fear, our doubt to, to bring us into your embrace. God, we give you now our gifts and our tithes and our offerings, trusting in your mercy and trusting in your desire to provide for us. Lord, all that we give, we give to you in Jesus' name. Amen.